to to talk about something you mentioned in in relation to the polarity view and it is the independence on the facts and and uh, uh, Wittgenstein's dream somehow was to construct uh, the world in such a way that contradictions and tautologies were uh, just not expressing anything. In, in some writings uh, earlier than the Tractatus, he used this metaphor uh, of propositions as a line dividing the points of a plane and, and the left and the right. And the, and the idea, uh, of course, one side uh, representing truth and the other falsity and the nonsensical, uh, uh, or not, rather, the absence of sense uh, of, of contradictions would... Uh, would be uh, uh, represented here by 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 the fact that a a contradiction we should uh, make hash of the line altogether and thus uh, fail to express anything. Now, in in an early um, commentary on the Tractatus, uh, Ramsey uh, pointed out that there is a a, um, a severe uh, crack in this uh, uh, understanding of, of what uh, uh, incompatibility or contradiction might be like. And uh, he used the example of a, a, a spot in the visual field that is uh, throughout uh, red, say, and throughout uh, blue. And, um, and this seems to cause troubles there because uh, although clearly if, if the spot is uh, uh, um, throughout red, for example, this entails, uh, at least conceptually, that it is not blue. So it does engender a contradiction, but in itself it is not a formal or tautologous contradiction. Um, now, it, Wittgenstein seemed to have been aware of this because in the Tractatus, as Ramsey notices, he tries to reduce these uh, distinctions to uh, uh, more physical uh, uh, things, and uh, and uh, in and probably in an attempt to to prove that all contradictions ultimately could be shown to be of the simple form p and not p, and and rightly I think uh, Ramsey uh, retorts that um, this is not going to work. He uses as an example the betweenness relation between events, and uh, and he says uh, if. Uh, uh, say B comes uh, 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 between A and D, and C uh, comes uh, uh, between B and D. Then it seems to follow that uh, that clearly uh, 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 C comes between A and D, and there is no way uh, in which this could boil down to some uh, 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 tautology. So the point here is that it opens room within the tractarian view uh, uh, for the possibility of there being incompatible facts uh, uh, that are not uh, tautologous uh, contradictions. And um, I wonder, well, th this also uh, 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 opens the way to a way in which we might understand uh, negative facts. For example, we might suppose that uh, 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 whatever makes uh, the proposition that a uh, 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 a spot is red is that it is another color that it is incompatible with that. Do you? Uh, uh, this seems to uh, um, suggest that uh, uh, um, there is, after all, room for dilithias in a pseudo tractarian uh, 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 world if we only accept that uh, we need two independent facts, each positive, uh, in the sense that not only in the sense that a uh, that, that uh, it is a fact, uh, so it is an entity, but also in a sense that they are ascribing precise properties to the same entity. And, uh, and, uh, and I wonder if you think that this uh, 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 way in which reality might instantiate contradictions is the only way in which concrete reality might instantiate um, contradictions. Okay. Well, there's, there's, a, there are lo there's lots there. Um, I mean, the general problem you're pointing to about red and blue is a problem 
because Wittgenstein, the Tractatus, assumes that atomic facts are independent. Um, and the fact of something being red and something's being blue, obviously not independent. Um, and uh, he, he struggled with this. In fact, he published two things in his lifetime. One was the Tractatus, and one was a short article in uh, the Proceedings of the Aristotelian Society in the 1920s, where he himself starts to dismantle the atomism of the Tractatus. Um, and this is going to be a problem for any view which has this kind of atomism, which is kind of packed into the modern logical semantics, as a matter of fact. Um, so um, that, that's an issue about atomism uh, and the fact that the world is not atomistic in this way. Um, but in terms of the Tractatus itself, when Wittgenstein wrote the Tractatus, um, he just learnt Russell's logic. I was you know, studying with Russell and he, he knew Frege or read Frege. And what he was doing <clears throat> was effectively reading the metaphysics of the world off of his logic. Okay, you've got the logic with the structure. And um, what you do is you say, well, because this is kind of an accurate, this has got to be an accurate representation of the world. The world must mirror the structure of the logic, uh, which is essentially the tractate's account of truth. But Wittgenstein is assuming Russell's logic, classic logic, if you like. He doesn't argue for it. Now, in fact, there's nothing essential to Wittgenstein's project which require you to do this. Okay. So, for example, you rip out all the twos of the tractatus uh, and stick in a semantics not for classical logic, but for, say, first degree internal. The, the general philosophical picture would work just as well. You just read off your picture of the world from your logic. So, what would happen if you do that? Well, there's going to be one major change. Um, and it's, this brings us back precisely again to the question of negative facts. So, um, Wittgenstein assumes that not P is true if P isn't true. Okay, at least in the atomic case, okay, the complex propositions are taken care of by truth conditions. If you did it with a power consistent logic or a uh, first degree example or something like this, you're going to have to assume that at the atomic level, the ground level, um, there can be a fact that P and a fact that not P. Um, and maybe both will happen, maybe neither will happen, maybe one or the other will happen. So uh, you do change the ontology of the world a bit um, because you have to presuppose that there are these things, these negative facts. Um, Does this change the logic? Yes, of course it does, because you're using a different logic. Yeah, um, could, could you expand a bit? And you said that uh, uh, you seem to be saying that uh, we might squeeze negative facts into the tractarian picture, and and uh, and, uh, and in that case, uh, uh, we would have to change the logic. Could you could you expand a bit on the changes that are would be necessary to, as you said, rewrite the tractatus and in uh, including negative facts and potentially contradictions. I'm not quite sure what more to say at this point. They're getting very technical. You mentioned, you, uh, yeah, you mentioned first degree entailment. Uh, uh, I was wondering if you could uh, give a, uh, um, an intuitive uh, understanding of, of uh, what it is. Of course, in, without getting too technical. Yeah. Okay. Well, in classical logic, um, things, propositions can be true, false, not both, not neither. And first degree entailment is a paraconsistent logic um, in which you haven't got just two possibilities, there are four possibilities um, true and true only, false and false only, both and neither. Um, and so uh, it's got the, the evaluation of proposition is going to allow for these four possibilities. 
Okay, so if you look at the semantics, then somehow or other you've got to allow for the possibility that uh, something is both true and false. In other words, both P and not P are true because the truth of not P is the same as false of P. So you need a semantics which is going to allow for P and not P both to be true. And if you go for a semantics of facts or states of affairs or something like this, this means you're going to have to have um, positive facts and negative facts. Um, how you do this, you can do it in a number of different ways, but one very natural way is just to come back to situation semantics, which we were talking about 15 minutes ago, where um, states of affairs come with a polarity bit, one and zero. Um, so every fact is going to be flagged one for true, zero for true negation. Um, now, there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't do the tractatus like this. Um, you, you're assuming a different logic, and ipso facto, you're, well, in particular, you're assuming that negation has a different semantics from classical logic. Uh, so the not P, uh, you can't define the falsity of P simply as the absence of the truth of P. Falsity of P is going to be its own thing. Uh, in first degree internment, you have to treat truth and falsity, symmetrically, even-handedly. Um, does, that, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I suppose uh, we don't have to get any more uh, um, tactical than that here.